In this video, we will use our VS Logic software to configure a Smart Aussie Master Controller for use with an Aussie slave. Please note that everything shown in this video represents a product in development and is subject to change. Here's the hardware setup we'll be using in this video. On the left is our Smart Aussie Master PLC and Gateway Controller. On the right is our GX20 Aussie Slave MDR Control Card. And here we have a 24 volt MDR roller for testing purposes connected to M2 of our GX20 card. First, I'll go over the Smart Aussie Master. The Smart Aussie Master card is an integrated PLC and gateway device for Aussie networks. The card is equipped with two Vampire connectors that allow easy connection to the yellow Aussie network cable and the 24 volt black power cable. Inside is an onboard Aussie power supply that takes 24 volts and generates 30 volt Aussie network power for up to 30 slave cards. Smart Aussie Master Controller also features Bluetooth connectivity, allowing the user to monitor and test the Aussie slave devices from the smartphone app, Aussie Links. You can turn on multiple outputs on Aussie slave devices to test conveyor sections even before the engineer has loaded the PLC program. The Smart Aussie Gateway also features a dual port Ethernet switch that enables daisy chaining and is used to connect to the PC as well as other PLCs using industrial protocols such as Ethernet IP, Modbus, and Profinet. The gateway is accessible by these protocols with or without a PLC ladder program. The GX20 is an Aussie Slave MDR control card that has two motor outputs and two photo I inputs, with direction and speed control for the motors. It uses the same Vampire connectors as the Master to connect to the Aussie network and power. The GX20 can power the MDR motors for up to 8 amps continuous operation. The Smart Aussie stores multiple programs known as conveyor types. Examples of common conveyor types would be an accumulation or cross transfer conveyor. The conveyor type is just a template, however. In order to run the program, we need to create an instance of it known as a conveyor section. By creating multiple conveyor sections, we can control large conveyor lines using just one master controller. In this video, we will design a basic conveyor type, create and configure an instance of it, and then run the project on our controller. Let's get started. We should begin by creating a new project and saving it somewhere. Then we should right click on conveyor types and click create new to create a new conveyor type. You might name it a cum or divert for example. Although I'm not going to create an actual cum program in this video, I'm just going to call it a cum to make the connection clear. The screen that appears is the ladder editor. The ladder editor can get quite advanced, so we highly recommend referring to the VS Logics documentation linked in the description for a written explanation of all the features offered by the ladder editor. The ladder editor, as its name suggests, uses ladder logic to define functionality. The last position on each rung is an output coil, while the ones before it are input contacts. If all the contacts on a rung are active or are shorts, then the operation on the coil is performed. The first thing I'm going to do is make the ladder program toggle an output on a slave. For that, I'm going to begin by putting an output coil on the rung here. This will alter a single bit, which is enough for the I.O. we're going to toggle. Now, all contacts and coils need an address to know what data they're operating on. There are two required parts to an address, a file type and an index. There are 13 different file types in total. Each file type stores a certain type of data and is intended for a certain purpose. There are three subtypes of file type, instance, global, and slave. Instance addresses are local to that conveyor section only. The register zero of one conveyor section is different from the register zero of another. Worth noting is that each conveyor section is given a certain amount of memory for instance addresses and that this limit cannot be exceeded. Global addresses are common between all conveyor sections. The global register zero address is the same between all conveyor sections, for example. Slave addresses store values that are read from and written to by slaves. These have an extra specifier at the start that determines which slave the address is referring to. Note that this specifier is just a placeholder ID within the ladder, and it will later on be mapped to a real slave address. Our goal is to toggle the output on a slave. So on this output coil, I'm going to enter the address 
0 out 1. This is going to set output 1 of slave 0. Remember that this 0 is not referring to Aussie address 0, but is just a placeholder for use within the latter program. For the first rung, I'm going to toggle the output when an input is enabled. To do that, I'm going to add a normally closed contact with this input address. I'm going to set up another output, but make this one blink. There are two ways to accomplish this. For the first, I'm going to couple two timers together. I'll first add two rungs, then put a timer countercoil on each. By default, these are configured as timers, which is what we want. I'm going to set the preset for each to 1000 milliseconds. On the first rung, I'm going to put an NC contact, and on the second, I'm going to put an NO contact. And set the address of each like so. The TC file type stands for timer counter. As the name suggests, each index of this file type corresponds to a timer counter coil in the latter program. The .dn suffix means that the contact will be active when the timer has reached the defined preset. By setting the two timers up like this, they will alternate between each other. Now we just need to put an output coil on a branch off the second rung, and our output will blink. The second way we can accomplish this blinking pattern is much simpler, but more limited. For this rung, I'm going to set the output address to bin3 to demonstrate an instance file type. You can see the RAM counter at the top of the window update to reflect the current amount of memory being used by the latter program. Instead of using two timers, I can instead just use an input contact with the address CW0.10. Control word 0 represents the system timer and the dot .10 suffix specifies the 10th bit of that timer. Since the system timer counts up in milliseconds, the 10th bit will toggle once every 1024 milliseconds. This solution is simpler, but is limited to powers of 2, and the on time must be the same as the off time. With this, our conveyor type is complete. We can now open the conveyor layout screen by double-clicking here. I'm going to create a section of our acume type by simply dragging it into the window. You can drag in as many sections as you need and connect them via interlocks. However, for now I'm just going to create one. A follow-up video will cover the conveyor layout screen in more detail. As you may remember, we still need to map an actual Aussie slave to our placeholder in the program. Right-click the instance and select Edit Slave Map. There will be an entry for each slave specified in the program. If I click the drop-down, you'll notice that there's nothing here. That's because we have to first add a slave to the project. Here in the Slave List tab, you can manually add slaves to the project by choosing the profile for the slave at that address. However, doing this manually for large networks can be tedious. If you have direct access to the Aussie network through a Smart Aussie board, you can actually automatically scan the existing network. Click on the Connect button and connect to the Smart Aussie board. Go to the Aussie tab of the Status window and click on Browse Network. The current Aussie network will appear in the list. You can add the slaves to the slave list one by one by selecting a matching profile for them, or you can add them all at once by clicking Auto Assign. Now if we navigate back to the slave map window of our conveyor section, we can select the slave. Our program is now ready. If you haven't connected to your Smart Aussie board yet, do so at this time. Then, click Download to download the project to the card. Once that is done, we can run the program by clicking the Run button. As you can see, the motor runs when the photo eye is active, but stops when it isn't. You can also see the Motor 1 LED blink once a second. We can also monitor this behavior from within VS Logics itself. First, click the Monitor button at the top of the window to enable monitoring. Then, we can either double click the section or right click and select Monitor. Then, a monitoring window for this section will appear. In this window, we can observe the latter program as it is being executed. 
we can see here the bin we configured is toggling about once a second. We can also observe the I.O. of the slave from the Aussie tab of the status window. You can manually alter the values of the program while it's running, or toggle the slave I.O. for debugging purposes. We could also alter the speed of the MDR roller by setting the out parameter of the GX20 slave. This could be done manually from the Aussie status window, or directly through ladder logic with the move coil. One final feature I'd like to demonstrate is the ability to upload the project directly from the board, allowing you to edit or monitor the project at any time from any PC. This concludes our first introduction to the Smart Aussie and VS Logic software. Please follow along the following videos to see more of the features that VS Logics has to offer.